Hello, welcome to Stocks Lighthouse. Thank you, thank you very much for actually watching this video. All right, basically this is actually a brand new uh, video channel. All right, and this is our first video, so I really appreciate and thank you for watching this video today. All right, before we get started, okay, just a quick disclaimer about what we are and what we do. Okay, basically in uh, Stock Lighthouse. We actually discuss stocks and option investing strategy with you and also share some simple market analysis with like-minded investors like yourself. Okay, Our purpose is actually to build a supportive community to actually share stocks investing knowledge and experience with one another. Right? But do remember that only invest in stocks and not option if you are certainly that this strategy actually meets your investment objective. Right? Okay, in the videos, all the posts that we do, particularly on the market analysis, is just actually information shared based on our own opinions. Okay, they are not formulated based on any professional financial background or any sort. They are just purely for education purposes, right? So, Stock Lighthouse is not responsible for any losses, financial or otherwise, incurred by following any of the strategies or suggestions that you may read or watch in our post or video, right? So, please, please, please do your own due diligence, all right? Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so, uh, we're basically talking mainly in the US market. All right, because that is what we deal with. All right, and uh, when we talk about US market, the key thing we always look at is S and P five hundred. Okay, and the best way we look at it, one of the ways is look at actually the SPY, okay, which is the S and P five hundred ETF index, which mimics very closely to the SPY five hundred index itself. So, in the US market, we have been on a long bull run for the past ten years. Right, and things got a little bit more, more, more interesting this year in two zero one eight because we up to date we have about two, uh, big corrections so far. We have two big corrections and, and things and the economy is getting a bit uncertain. So where is it heading to? So if you're looking at um, straight down to the one year mark, within this one year things has getting a bit choppy. All right, just let me zoom out a bit more, slightly more than a year, so again you can have, have a better look. Alright, so on the chart, okay, just, just to clarify some of the stuff first, on the chart you will see these three lines, basically they are the simple moving average. I use it to actually use it as a trend identifying uh, indicators. Okay, the blue one actually the 50 simple moving average, the green one 150 moving average, and the red one 200 moving average. So the, the blue and the green generally I use it for short term to mid term uh, trend. Okay, the long one, uh, sorry, the red one, the red one, 200 moving average, I use it for the long term trend. Okay, so in 2018, the start of the year, somewhere around February, okay, US and China has a broke up on the trade war. Okay, that's where the price started to fall. We, we were speculating and thinking that that's the start of the bear market, but the 200 moving average actually holds at a very strong dynamic support. Okay, it bounces off three times, all right, and the market continues to go up, all right. So only until probably somewhere around October, all right, price came down because of certain unknown factor. Okay, then price start to ranging for now. Okay, the more interesting thing is uh, over the last few days, just the last few days, all right. Okay, the Fed chairman actually uh, did mention on his speech that uh, he. The U.S. Federal uh, Fed Reserve is actually looking uh, to actually increase the interest rate at a more moderate pace that fits uh, with the economy. Yeah, so on this particular day, okay, the price, the market take the news as the interest rate will not be increased as fast in the coming 2019. So the price actually shoot up for the market. And then on the same week after... Uh, the price went even higher after the G20 summit where the US and the China had agreed to cease trade war. Okay, unfortunately, don't know what happened. All right, things get a lot of uncertainty and yesterday that's a big, huge, huge, huge market sell off. All right, so it's really interesting for us to actually start our first video on this day because usually new people start a new channel on talking about video, especially when it comes to the market on a bear market. And particularly on the day where it actually had a huge sell-off before. But I think 
the market is just a market. It's just doing what it need to do. Uh, Any time is a time to start to share good information with, with investors like you guys. They are watching the video, all right. So what we are looking at here is, hmm, let me get this up. Okay. So if you can uh, identify, you can take a look from the technical TA perspective, technical analysis perspective. Okay, you will find that actually price has been ranging in this channel, horizontal channel, for the past two one month to two months or so. All right. Okay. So to me, I look at it in such a way, looking on this factor and also looking on the simple moving averages. Uh, for my personal opinion, I would think that uh, the S and P five hundred firstly is slight. It is ranging, it is getting a bit uncertain, but it definitely slightly skewed more towards uh, the point that is probably, probably going to turn into a downtrend or towards a bear market. And why do I say so? If firstly, price currently now trading way below the long term 200 moving averages, and based on the last uh, trading day, it has closed below it. Okay. And the key thing is the red line, 200 moving average is starting to sloping down. It, it seems to want to get up, but after this big close, I believe the next next day or two, the point, the, the moving average will start to pointing down again. Okay, but ma mainly the market is getting uncertain for, for this couple of couple of months. All right. So if where the market probably will go, nobody really knows because no one has the crystal ball to able to fully identify it. But what we will see probably in the next one month, within December, by the end of the year, uh, price most likely, most likely we're going to trend within, okay, uh, just going to trend within, oops, wait, just let me get that away, alright, that's the one, okay, most likely just going to trend probably within this channel, okay, until you hit 2019, the start of the year, you know, everybody get back from their holidays, out of the holiday mood, and then the economy or the country will start to think again, what do they want to project and what area do they want to work on in terms of the finance and the economy for their own country or as a region at large uh, to head towards the new year for 2019. Then, by then, we will see uh, where the market is really going to head towards. Okay, but as of now, as of now, as this point on this video, it just is uncertain. Market is very volatile just slightly skewed towards the bear market side based on the price movement in the market. All right. So at this point in time, what investors like you yourself uh, in the stock market can do, uh, basically if you are looking, if you are investors who only understand or who only knows how to buy uh, and wait for capital appreciation or wait for dividend, all right, there's a, probably a good chance for you to look at some of the stock that might be potential. But just to take note that the market in general is very bearish, right? The momentum and the, and the signs or the mood of the market is very bearish. So the uh, price may not hold and go higher uh, in, the, in, in the short term, all right? So if you're an investor who want to buy value stocks and looking for it to go up, uh, you got to be patient. The risk is a bit higher. You can definitely look at that. But if you are more sophisticated investors and you play where the market go up and down, you actually can look at ways how to actually short the market, or how we call it shorting the market. Okay, I will. So we'll go into some of the examples that we'll look at, uh, or rather some of the key studies that uh, we actually look at at this point in time uh, to, to identify some of the potential stocks that probably there stands a bit of chance for us to, to look at it to enter. All right. So let's start off the basic. If you're looking at it as an investor point of view, okay, this company is one of it that we, we like it very much. Of course, the mode of this company is very strong. Okay, this company is called Adobe. I think most people will know Adobe. They are the company that actually owns PDF. They are the company that actually owns uh, Photoshop. They even terms the Photoshop that's so common nowadays. All right. So if you are, uh, okay, firstly, if you are a value investor, Right, just let me get the no. Okay, just give me a minute. Yeah, let me get that. Okay, if you are a value investor, most of the time we look at ways to actually buy undervalued stocks, undervalued stocks, right? Okay, but unfortunately for uh for Adobe, it's not really undervalued per se. All right, if you are looking at the discounted cash flow model. Okay, discounted cash flow model. 
Okay. Currently for Adobe, we are looking at the price. Uh, based on my calculation, based on my calculation, is roughly somewhere about one eight seven point three seven. All right, one eight seven point three seven. Okay. Just let me get this font higher so that something larger so that you can see. All right, based on the discounted cash flow model, uh, my own calculation, uh, this is somewhere around. Uh, the, the intrinsic value if you based on the discounted cash flow model okay but the current price for the last closing price for uh, Adobe is at 245 so although the market has came down a bit it came down and bounced back up uh, it's still pretty much uh, uh, overvalued uh, in terms of this this method of, of valuing the company all right but if you are if you are a person who looks a bit more for technical looking for short term uh, now this now potentially you can actually look at it uh, as potential entry point okay, where the price actually come close and bounce off the 200 moving average so it's not really exactly at that point but we want to see that it actually came down probably lower and then start to bounce up a bit more uh, then probably we can took an entry but of course do bear in mind that the market as a whole is bearish so even though the price may bow it may not go up and sustain for a long time right probably you want to take a quick once you reach certain level somewhere around probably break past this level you want you might want to consider taking a short small profit uh, if it goes higher it will probably go higher okay but you might actually want once it pass the level you might consider want to put a stop loss somewhere around this level so that if the price really drop you will hit your stop loss at least you are still managed to lock in some of the profits yep okay so the other company something pretty similar we'll look at uh, all right anyway for adobe why uh why actually we identify as a one of the good company because of the mode itself adobe has a very strong brand okay it's intangible intangible assets as a mode is very strong and you think about it firstly is uh, who are the people who actually use Adobe? Most of their clientele are now creators, designing creators. So most of them do it professionally, most of them. Yeah, so during a crisis come, do you think all these professionals still have to work? Do they still have to take on projects to actually uh, create work for their clients and make a living? Yes, they do, right? This is why the chances or the risk of them dropping out all these packages are lower. They probably will downgrade to lower packages. Uh, the smaller size investors will probably just exit out of their program, but usually they are just small investors. The, their big corporate clientele are still using their programs, and their programs are very, very sticky because the skills that their designers learn, and as of now, they don't have a near close competitor that provide a similar platform for them to switch over. Right, that's why Adobe have a very strong mode in my perspective. Right, the next company I will look at is Mastercard. Right, Mastercard is another very very good company. Can as you can see, it's right on an uptrend. Uh, in fact, most interesting thing is when uh, the Trump trade war has initiated in somewhere in February and March. Can you see that the price? Okay, can you? See? Right, do you see that the price in February and March? didn't have a drastic drop as what we see from the S&P 500 itself. So it's a very very strong mode company. Okay, only until October things start to change when the whole market really dropped. Uh, Mastercard dropped as well. So it has actually came down close below its 200 moving averages uh, and then bounced on a range similar to S&P now went up again. All right. Uh, but what do I see in the mid? If you're looking at a Mastercard on the mid term and long term, uh, it's still generally on an uptrend. Why? Because the moving averages are still sloping up. Okay, particularly on the uh, the green hundred fifty and the two hundred moving averages on the mid to long term is still sloping up. So if your investors are looking to buy and hold on the mid to long term, you can look at that. Okay, but then of course, if let's say you are value investors. Okay, probably you just want to wait a little bit longer you want to wait a little bit longer okay okay because for mastercard 
all right same thing using the this cash discounted cash flow model all right uh, based on my calculation mastercard is intrinsic value is roughly about one two two one two three roughly about one two two one two three this range currently the stock price is at 200 so it's still overvalued it is still overvalued so uh, unless so you can buy it and hold but of course you'll be buying something overvalued but if you're looking looking to invest something on the mid short term something looking at the short term uh, what we need to look at what are we uh, looking for in the mastercard is same thing price come back down to a touch and bounce up on the 200 moving average so it's not really there probably in the next few days when the market open we will see that it bounce here and go up probably we can look for a short-term entry okay but do be aware same thing just like adobe uh, the u.s market as a whole is generally sideways and more towards the bearish okay price has certain resistance over this level yeah so once if you entered price came if you really entered price went up okay this is the first point that you might want to consider to take a short profit okay if you hold on to it and price really went up Okay, suggestion is one and go beyond that point. Okay, place a stop low, stop loss uh, below at or below the resistance level. So just in case the price shoot up and came down again, all right, you are stop up on this level and you still lock in your profit over here, right? Okay, that's for Mastercard. So when I talk about Mastercard, usually I talk about one of its a uh, very close competitor very very close competitor which is also a very 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 good and very very strong company because we still make transactions especially when in the current era where everything is digitized all right which is visa all right visa same thing strong company journey on the uptrend uh like just like mastercard okay just like mastercard in the february and march period where the first trade war news was happening okay it moved down a bit but didn't drastically drop a lot okay uh, same thing only until october recently price significantly dropped a bit where the whole market moved but you can see that visa actually find a very 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 strong support somewhere three times or rather very strong support on the moving uh, 200 moving averages so yesterday when there's a strong sell-off the price came down a bit the price came down a bit okay we are looking same thing we are looking at where probably the price will actually come back down bounce off the 200 moving averages okay then bounce back up again probably we can look for an entry same thing short-term entry why because s p 500 as a whole is still moving sideways and more towards the bearish so once we see that price shoot up Okay, up to probably the resistance level on this short term basis okay, we might want to consider take a profit okay, if price went up higher than that okay, you might want to place a stop loss here to lock in uh, to, to lock in your profit just in case when you head down okay, you are stop out on this level to lock in a short profit that you take over here alright okay so same thing if you are a value investor if you are a value investor Mm, okay all right let's let me get this in oops where's my text yeah all right okay if you're a value investor same thing using a discounted cash flow model okay for model so for visa we are looking at some the price intrinsic value price at 128.76 okay at this point of time at this point of time okay visa is really 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 close to intrinsic value okay based on the discounted cash flow model based on my calculation all right at least okay uh, so the price has never really hit that level because uh, the price lowers that it went is about 130 a 128 is somewhere around this level now it was close but we not really there so as a value investors uh, if you are only buying if that's your thesis if that's your investment rules uh, as a value investor so just wait for the price to hit back down and consider look up again but if you're short-term investors you can actually look at it when you actually move 
bounce off the simple um, 200 moving averages all right okay so that is for people who are actually looking to buy uh, stocks even uh, that also applies uh, if you are if you are a person who actually uh, investing or trading based on the CFDs okay I don't really recommend that because I don't do that myself uh, I find that it's a lot more risk in, in although I learned about it I heard about it before uh, but I just don't do that so but if you are a CFD traders you can actually do that but just do remember know when to set your stop loss yeah because as a CFD you do understand that uh, it's more it's also a leverage tool so there's a lot more risk involved you just need to manage it properly but since that also same thing still applies for stock investors okay do portfolio size okay, your investment especially in column current market when it's very volatile right okay so next for uh, for more sophisticated investor who actually know how to short the market and you're looking to short the market in a short term what can you do okay one of e, okay one of the car one of the stocks you can look at is basically this ticker that I'm looking at EEM the emerging emerging market all right okay as we know uh, the emerging market actually utilize a lot of uh, trading with the world Okay, and the main dominant currency that you is always the USD and when we talk about USD why is it impacted and affected recently it's because the USD has been the US or rather the US has been raising their interest rate ongoing three times this year and that has dramatically affected uh, the emer emerging market why because they actually borrow a lot of USD to actually do their trades to, to support and finance your business and economy but with the increasing of the interest rate that means more interest are charged on them the loans get heavier get more taxing and and investors start to lose faith and confidence because investors or rather business owner were having more and more difficulties trying to get loans uh, to pay off their loans so price have been coming down for the past close to six months all right so based on the chart, on a technical point of view, uh, if you are able to draw a trend line, you can see that price and moving down trend, pretty much down trend on this line for the past six months. Right, just let me draw. That's a resistance line. Just let me draw one more support line. Right. okay so something like that so price has been moving down okay if you look at the simple moving averages the price the line have crossed and it's all pointing now it's also telling me a sign that it's downtrend so so what happened is uh, after the the Fed chairman make the announcement that uh, they're going to adjust the interest rate according to where the market movement is okay the economy just feel that the increase or in the speed of increasing the interest rate will not be as fast okay they actually make the price actually shoot up a bit more because they think that it's easier for the emerging market to do business the interest rate will not be increasing as fast and as taxing as for businesses okay but unfortunately when the price shoot up the next news about uh, the China, US and China's uh, cease or trade war doesn't seem to be on a concrete plan the market fall, fall back in again okay so uh, based on TA charting, it seems like the price closed within the channel again. Okay. So if you are short-term investor looking to short the market, uh, you too can consider. You can consider short the market on this level. Do remember to put a stop loss. Okay, so I just draw it again. Okay, put uh, entry somewhere around this level. Right. You can actually put a stop loss just in case the price didn't really keep down and go back up again. We really never really never never really know where the price will move okay but if the price do move you probably want to see the price come down to this support level which is the profit take profit level okay looking uh, to take profit uh, from this level but if you're a person who just only a small portfolio and you're willing to risk uh, the fluctuation of the market and think that the emerging market will continue to go down trend probably you can just hold a bit longer and let the price bounce up and go even further down uh, that's a possibility okay but do remember in this volatile market 
whatever profit you can take it in that will be good <laughs> just don't be greedy yeah okay yeah so that is one of the way to do it so if you are an investor who don't know how to short the market of course one of the way you can do it is do it through cfd okay but we don't do cfd here okay the other way you can do it especially in the u.s market you can use options okay you can actually uh, use option strategy to help you to achieve this kind of investment okay so in the option what can in the option world what can you do basically uh, you can do two methods two methods in fact there's more methods but i just want to show you two methods how to actually do it one you can actually do and buy uh, buy a put option mm, yeah just let me see how to draw this okay you can actually just oops sorry just let me do it again okay you can actually just buy a put option okay buy the put option and anticipate the price from here will drop to here then you sell off close close your position or sell off your put option actually to make a profit all right but it's not the other way you can actually uh, what you can do is actually do a what we call a credit spread okay you just sell the call okay sell a call and buy a call okay to create a credit spread okay to profit the difference in terms of premiums if the price uh, continue to move downwards instead of moving up uh, that is another way that you can profit from a downtrend market all right okay just a quick look uh, i'm coming i'm based in singapore all right so if you are based in singapore technically you actually can use uh, many of the platform one of the platform that i personally use is actually the thing or swim by td american trades all right so uh, for let's say the emergency emerging market EEM you actually can look to uh, buy a put all right to buy a put okay but usually for short term trade like this I won't really go long long in in the expiry I just probably going to look at one to two months just for a quick profit and exit the other reason why I look at the shorter term is because usually the shorter terms uh, puts are, are lower in premium so so it depends on your portfolio size do remember the portfolio size okay uh, i will just recommend you just to take one or two percent uh just to risk one or two percent of your portfolio on one of any any one trade okay don't risk too much of it so just in case you got it wrong uh if you just lose the money you're just going to lose one or two percent of your portfolio all right so currently the price of the uh eem is at 41 dollars and zero two cents okay uh, if you really really want to go deep and you have your portfolio size is a bit bigger you can actually look at somewhere around the strike price where it's about 45 no sorry 44 okay then you actually just buy a put currently at three dollars 75 cent per share okay for options as such option we go by contract per contract is 100 shares so for you to buy one forty four put option right you need to have 375 us dollar in your account to execute this all right so you can actually do that but if you're a person who just want to test your luck just to profit a bit of price movement and because this is just like a small pocket money kind of thing uh, you don't want to spend so much money you do can also consider uh, just look at the strike price somewhere maybe 41 or even 42 in between someone 41 or 42 that's perfectly fine you're just going to raise about 150 dollars to, to about 200 dollars just to buy a put okay just for the price to 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 move in towards downwards direction if it, if the market goes all right okay and you have about 44 days for expiry dates all right so if not you can actually look at credit spread uh, which is actually a core spread at this point of time uh, at price about 41 you probably Okay, we just let me go back to the chart as you can see okay, the previous high the recent high at price that went up to about 42 20 around there 42 20 so uh, if i'm looking at the credit spread i will be more keen to look at uh, somewhere between 42 and 43 all right so just let me check it out so if I did a credit spread on um, credit call spread 42 43 42 43 okay I'm going to risk so it's it's a one order spread based on one contract that means I'm going to risk $100 so 
So I can make about, if I'm right, I can get for roughly about 29 cents. 29 cents per dollar. That means I am looking at a 29% return, if I got it right, for every $1 I wish. Alright, so that's one way you can look at emerging, uh, emerging market. Uh, if it's if, if you're looking at it for downtrend, right? The other stocks that I have been looking at uh, that is on a downtrend that is this company, which is funny thing is the platform that I'm trading with, TD American Trade. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so this company, uh, it, same thing is on a bull run up to the start of the mid of somewhere around the mid of the year. All right, I think there's some merger and acquisition. I'm not too sure about it, but price came down. All right, it started to bounce off the 200 moving averages. Then it has been sloping down, right? So if I were to draw, same thing if I were to draw a trend line. Okay. Right, if I were to draw a trend line, something like that, right? It seems that the chart based on the price, the technical price movement, all right, based on the structure itself, it has been forming uh, lower highs and lower lows, all right? So as of uh, as of yesterday, okay, the price actually have a big sell-off, okay, and the price have get down quite a bit. Right, I will not say okay, I will not say here is a, a perfect entry. Why is that so? Because it's somewhere around half of this channel already, halfway mark of this channel. So uh, if you go it down, you're only gonna take fifty percent of the potential profit, but then if you're gonna lose, you're gonna probably lose fifty percent uh, as well. But uh, if price shoot up, uh, you're gonna get a lot worse. Yeah, but it's something I, I Something that is good to look out for, if the price probably retrace back up first, right? Wait, retrace back up first and bounce off this resistance lines again and come back down. Okay, that will be a good sign to show that the stocks most probably going to continue the downtrend, alright? And looking at the moving averages, okay, the 50 and 150 are pointing down, the 200 is sloping, sloping down as well. Right, so it just give me a sign, uh, a signal to show that actually this stock is now really moving on the town trend. It's just where to find the right possible entry to enter. Okay, but do take note, same thing, do take note. We would not know, we don't have the crystal ball to know where the market is going. So no matter what entry we enter, we just want to find the higher probability trades. But we still can go wrong, right? Okay, so always remember do portfolio size, never risk more than what you can afford to lose, right? So same thing for same thing for TD American trade. Uh, if you if you want to short on this stock, you can basically do it on CFD. Alright, if you can't, you can actually same thing do option. Uh, TMT, AMTD, TD American trade. Right. Likewise, we are looking at maybe about. Yeah, probably about a month, no, two months until uh, a month or so until next year, January expiry, a month plus. So, or if you even want to look at February, you may. Okay. Alright, but looking at, looking at the price of this, probably, alright, if you're looking at the price, if you're looking at something shorter, about um, until January, you can look into actually, uh, position the sell somewhere at the price of about uh, 50 or 50 or 55 I think that's perfectly fine but if you're looking at 55 okay I personally I will actually look at getting in for an extra month because the price is not really too much different but then uh, I got uh, I just paid a bit more just a couple of dollars more but then I based on the same strike price but then I got and one extra month just in case I got it wrong, right? But I'm risking roughly about the same amount of money. Okay, so this is something that probably will work out. Okay, but if you're looking in terms of the uh, cost spread, uh, in terms of cost spread, 
for for AMTD, I won't really look at cost spread mainly it's because the premiums are not very fantastic. All right, by the way, I look at it. Uh, I just going to risk five hundred dollars for just peanuts, which is more likely I won't do it because it doesn't really make investment sense. Yeah, so for AMTD, probably I will just buy put if I want to. Alright, so nothing is confirmed. This is just some stock ideas I'm looking at. It doesn't mean that I'm going to enter, doesn't mean we're going to enter. Uh, it's just something that we are looking at just for sharing purposes with you on this new video to give you an idea how we actually look at stuff. And if the opportunity arises, we may enter. But the same thing, uh, this video or this post or anything that we share is not any buy or sell recommendation we never buy or sell and we are not a signal provider we don't provide signal when we enter it's just really purely based on educational purposes when we create when we are doing this video what is on the market what is on our chart what is on our watch list we just present as what it is okay whether to take any action same as mentioned on the disclaimer please do your own due diligence if you find that it's worth it for you to take the risk and you're comfortable doing it please go ahead otherwise just exclude it for for investors who are listening to this they are not used to shorting the market don't know how uh, please do not try to attend without understanding and attend lessons or course or read out information on them before you're doing it because it's very very risky because for shorting the market it's one whole new level knowledge on investing style right so don't attempt it if you don't know how to right always seek advice before you do it yeah so i think that's pretty much for what we're going to cover for this video okay for this post okay i hope you like uh, i hope you like what we share with you all right so uh, if you like what we do, if you like this video, please like us on our Facebook page. Please follow us on our Facebook page. Please like our video on YouTube as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so that when there's more videos or posts coming in, you'll be notified. We hope to grow this community bigger and larger okay, so that everyone share ideas, share opportunities that arise, potential opportunities that arise, and then it's up to you to make the decision to take it or not. All right? The market is volatile okay i hope that you do your own due diligence be safe okay do not act irrationally on the market because you get killed very easily at this point of time all right just invest safely and i catch up with you again soon right goodbye